What's up, what's up, Monsters Cronsters? I have this number blocked, and every day at this time, I get a text on my car. It's so weird. Hi! Happy Friday! It's Friday! I said it's Friday! A uh, couple of quick updates. Number one, it's the end of my second week. I still got a job. Uh, Jayla and I'm loving her. We're getting, we're just, it's just, it's getting better and better. I think Scott, I'm like, we're Scott's angels. Um, he's just, he's an amazing boss. It's just been amazing. Um, you're busy all day. Ooh, they got a Girl Scout thing. If you're busy. You're so busy. It's so cool. You're so busy. You look up and you're like, how in the hell is it five o'clock? That's why every night, y'all, I leave here at seven. I leave work at seven, something like that. I am, um, he's so freaking cool. Like I told you, he paid me my first week. And one day it snowed and I was like, I had four hours later, but I make it up. Um, I was like, I mean, I'm there late. Um, last night or yesterday I had a mammogram. So I was gone for two hours. So an extra hour. And girl don't get there early. Although today I was the first one there. I had to unlock the office building and the office. Um, but I like to stay late, you know, because you can get a lot done um, when the phones aren't ringing. I love it. I freaking love it. It's amazing. I found out a lot of his producers aren't producing. I was talking to uh, Jayla today. They left us alone. I'm like, they left the two new girls all by them ourselves from like three to four. And uh, I was like, so what did you find out about commission? Because you brought up commission on um, what Scott had told our commission would be if we sold here. Seven percent. So, he has producers, and he goes, they're not really producing, they're just getting paid. I'm like, you mean off renewals? And he goes, yeah. I'm like, hmm. He goes, y'all get, you can sell, you get paid here. So, it's 7% commission. I'm, I'm taking this light, damn it, Janet, you're a slut. Here I go, ah, it's red, don't hit me. Damn, these lights, these left-hand turn lights suck here. I'm telling you, every time. So, anyway, great, great job, great day. I actually have a huge uh, event tonight. Um, it's a huge women's event. It's called The Gathering. I go once a month, and um, I'm going tonight, so I'm going to miss my Bible study. But I am um, going to go to The Gathering because I it, it's like celebrate recovery for me. Uh, I love my Bible study, though, too. Guys, I was in Luke hardcore. God has been pushing Luke on me. Everywhere I go, he is pushing Luke on me. Last night, I started freaking out, okay? I just, like, weird anxiety. Like, I could not stop with this negative self-talk about work, you know? And I haven't been picking up my ADHD medicine because it's $4,000 and I don't want to. So today, I literally, this morning, I went to bed to um, to Luke. This morning, I think I woke up in First Peter, which every, I love me some First Peter, guys. And it was funny because it was the same thing about where he went to um, the uncircumcised. And they're like, you know, you can't do that. But God had told them um, in a dream, um, the animals. And he said, I will never eat anything unclean. And he said, don't call anything from the Lord unclean. And then he was sent to that guy's house and the Holy Spirit was on him. And that's when they realized that the Gentiles could get the Holy Spirit too. Anyway. Listen to a bunch of stuff, but Luke is kicking my butt. Last night, I was watching a video from somebody I love. Oh, no, you know what it was? And I sent this to Valley. It's Reckless Love, one of my favorite songs, um, uh, Christian songs. And um, I hate parking in my spot. It's like the hardest freaking spot to park in. Josh knows, too. He's like, Mom, you about to hit. I hate my spot. I mean, it's great, but anyway, real quick, um, Reckless Love. So, I had downloaded it, because I really love the song. i got to get ready to go. Um, I had downloaded it, um, because I really love the song. And I was listening to it this morning, getting ready, right? And I thought, you know, I'm going to listen to some Christian music this morning while I'm getting ready. And in the middle of, it's a live version, in the middle of it, and I sent it to you, Valley. Um, the first time I heard it was at CR, at Hill Country, and it was a female vocal. And it lends itself to a female vocal. Amazing valley. Oh. So, oh, um, a couple a couple things I got to get done. Um, Reckless Love by um, Corey. And I think, man, the guy looks like he used to be in a gang or something. Because I actually watched the video. I, I heard the song and then I heard him start, like I could tell it was live. And then he started, he goes, I want to read something to you. And it was out of Luke. And it was about how the song is Reckless Love. 
um, how he leaves the 99 to go find the one, right? And, um, and they were sitting at the table with the sinners and the tax collectors and stuff. And the Pharisees were kind of calling them out. And then, um, Jesus says, you know, he gives them the parable about, you know, you throw that lost sheep over your shoulder and you go back and you ask all of your neighbors and friends to come, you know, um, celebrate with you that you found your, your lost sheep. And the song is a really good song. And I know a lot of you guys don't like, Christian music and I get it, you know, but a lot of people come to Christ through Christian music and, 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 and in a way that's very different than maybe some people might get. I remember, you know, going to the walk to Emmaus and the one thing I took from it was I was going to spend 30 days listening to Christian music. I was making that deal and it literally changed my whole outlook on things. It was really weird. Um, I need to get back to that, you know, um, because I've been listening to blue October for years. Um, and a lot of that is Christian because he's, you know, so I need to pay attention, but sometimes I get angry and I listen to his old music. Um, so I went and watched the video and I watched him read it. And then he read a, a story about reckless love, um, and how it's not that God is reckless in any way, but the fact that he loves us as much as he does is almost reckless. It's like, you keep coming after me over and over. And if you listen to the words of the song, and I get you guys that are musicians and yeah, 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 Christian music. I get it. But think about all the people that, that, that do love that, you know, and don't dismiss them for that. Don't dismiss somebody because they worship like they do to this kind of worship music. Don't dismiss that. If you have ever, ever been to a Mercy Me concert, uh, uh, Cheryl, uh, Dory, I mean, not Dory, Dory, Dory too. And, um, Norma, it is the most amazing filled stadium of it, it's it's an amazing feeling you know so don't dismiss that you know and i get the ring the reading of the singing of the hymnals i mean i did that in high school i went to episcopal high school um shoot i did it in junior high we sang we sang those songs for a solo and ensemble a lot of them but and i love them i do i don't know them um i need to i would love to get to know them again but um, I am one of those who I jam to music. I am one of those who just jams to music and music does something to my soul. It does. I think we, we all agree. Whoever loves music, it does something to you. And some of these songs, you know, one of my, two of my favorite songs of all time. Okay. Sweet Judy Blue Eyes by Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. One it played at my funeral and Lavila Strangiato by Rush. Okay. Two of my favorite songs of all time. And, um, love songbird by Fleetwood Mac. You know, I have a lot of favorites. Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Um, Lady, Little River Band. And they all take you somewhere, you know, um, they take you somewhere. They take you on a, on a, they take you somewhere emotionally. And anybody who loves music, which most, most of my friends do, um, like the song Reckless Love. When I first heard that song, and like I said, it was female vocals. Um, I think Norma or Cheryl was there with me. And I'm like, who sings this song? What's this song? Um, sometimes what that does for me. And I get angry when I don't like the words. <laughs> Y'all remember it at CR? Um, I'm not angry, but I'm like, man, this is so mellow. It's a Monday night. I need to shed off this day. I need to feel it. So Reckless Love, when it was played, it took out of my head the thoughts of the day. It literally did. Um, the music, the timbre of the tonality of the, of the, of the singer, the tonality of the melody, of the bridge that grows obviously in a lot of christian music the bridge is what grows and grows um and the way like united pursuit well um it grow it just you know um i know the word and i can't think of it not transitions but you know what i mean um so don't dismiss it and when you hear a song like Reckless Love and then you listen to the words, um, oh, the overwhelming, never ending, 
Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, finds where I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. I don't sing it that great, okay, but... Those words mean everything. Mean a lot. Anyway, that um, keyboard went to a very good home. They were so excited, and she was like, "You're so excited about this." I'm like, "Y'all don't know. My sister knows how to do it, but I don't. But it is so cool. You can like they bought it for their son to learn keyboard. And he was like eight. He was like so excited, guys. He was so excited about that keyboard. It was a great. It was a great handoff on Facebook Marketplace. That that young boy was thrilled. The dad was thrilled. They were around the corner. It was one of my most favorite experiences doing Facebook Marketplace because that went to a home that was, that kid was so excited. I was like, look what else it does. Look what else it does. And they were all laughing. It has a wah-wah pedal. <laughs> as a sustain pedal, but it has this thing that, that like it goes, wah, wah. I'm like, it's like a treble I don't think you know what I'm talking about. So anyway, tonight's going to be a big worship night with that girl, Cammie, who I love. Um, I still need to do this thing with Norma with this um, ticket. I can't wait for you to come, Ashley. Last night, my sister, you've been a rock for me. Lance and then made it safe to Missouri. I'm so glad to hear that. I did send Robin my video of me breaking down just because I love them so much. Um, I love them so much. I mean, y'all all know one of the reasons I'm here is because of that family. I love those little girls. Anyway, I'm getting emotional. My brother, y'all know my brother. And Robin, I I can't honestly tell you, except for my support, my support system, my sister. But Robin's a sister, my sister. I mean, a straight up a sister. I've known her for so long. Um, That's so genuinely good and sweet and just... Dory, she reminds me a lot of you. A quiet, gentle spirit that's just good, you know. I love that family. I love the way they're raising their kids. I love the way they are. That's why when I come and stay with them for a week, I freaking love it, y'all. I gave up soda. I started doing nothing but listening to the Bible at night. This is because that's the effect that my brother and I have when we when we spend time together. It means the world to me. Um, so. Last night, I've been having a couple of breakdowns. That's why my phone's like, don't cry while recording. No, I'm joking. I got to go soon. Um, I've been coming home and I get a little emotional. And I immediately feel a sense of abandonment. Um, because I wanted it to so badly to work out a different way. You know what I mean? Like, I wanted it to work out a different way, you know? We all know. It is what it is. God's got a plan. He's got an amazing plan. I wanted it to work out different, and I felt like I failed. You know what I mean? Ooh, Dory. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm going to send this to Dory, but she, we're going to start meeting soon. She's going to start uh, giving me, meeting with me again. And y'all remember when she used to meet with me, it devastated me when we stopped. Um, but she's going to start again. It's going a little longer than I want, but I wanted to talk to y'all. Because you guys, right now, you're, you're my therapist, okay? Dory's going to be taken over, but I'm still going to send y'all Moscow's cons because I think it's important. Um, anyway, real quick, been hearing from Josh. Um, very excited. Um, again, Ashley, I want to write, I want to help you write a book. I'm a really good writer. I want to help you write a book. Ashley had some tidbits for Josh that were brilliant. You know what I mean? Um, getting a storage unit and he did. And, um, then YMCA membership go go take a shower and so, not, and so he did go to the budget in the other night um it's 30 bucks you know but he was able to go to sleep because he was starting work today so one of the things i had done a long time ago was gone to bg personnel to get into apartment leasing and all that well i got him involved for the maintenance and they loved him well he called me today and he goes i don't think he should work for these moving companies i'm gonna be straight with you um, he's not that he's better than that, but he's better than that. 
<laughs> He's got it going on, y'all. He does. He just needs to find it. You know, kind of like I did. I was a waitress. I wasn't like corporate Monica making almost be six figures at AAA, you know. But he called me today. And I've been, I have this book that I pray for my adult children. And I have been on my knees begging God to pour his Holy Spirit over him and to to pour the Holy Spirit over Joshua so much that any evil that is trying to, to take and destroy um, any anything that he has or is trying to do in Joshua's life, whether it's his mind or his um, intentionality or his um, consistency or his complacency, you know, that God just fills him every day, guys. I'm praying every day that God helps me, <laughs> but, and fills him. So he called today kind of on fire and I was excited. He went to a temp agency and they will put him to work immediately. Mom, you used to show up at a couple of the apartments. They'll send you to apartments everywhere. And I'm like, dude, go to every damn job. They pay him weekly. And those people will offer him a job in a heartbeat. They love guys in leasing y'all. They love them. And you can get an apartment. This is what I wanted for anyway. Neither one in blah 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 blah. Um, the other thing is last night, I think I sent it to my sister pretty late. And I called Ashley today. Thank you. I for the first time I felt like I was eighteen years old, Dan, when I moved into Rose Garden Apartments. And I had my own apartment. I'll never forget that feeling. I have not had my own apartment. I had it from October to March in twenty sixteen. Other than that, I haven't had my own apartment in, y'all, I don't know how long. I've lived with, I've lived with Amanda and Lori, y'all know. <clears throat> I reorganized my whole damn kitchen because it wasn't done the way I do it because I'm never in the kitchen. I took everything from up top. I reorganized everything. I was like, I've got my own apartment. I felt like I was a teenager with my first apartment. So I just had to tell y'all that. So victories, victories. I love you. I got to go get ready. Mwah. Bye.